Hello everybody and welcome to another top 10 board gaming video. Today's topic is all about dice. Now this is something I've talked about a decent number of times on my channel throughout the years where I've discussed randomness in board gaming, I've discussed dice games themselves, and a few other things. And just to clarify a couple of things real quick, when it comes to randomness in games, whether it's card draws, dice, whatever it happens to be, not only do I not have a problem with it, it's something that I know is necessary to make a good game replayable. The issue that I end up having is when games don't have a way to mitigate some of the issues that can come with this. So when you have a huge swing due to a bad die roll, or you happen to draw a card that destroys everything you have, stuff like that, that is bad game design. So what I wanted to focus on today are my 10 favorite games that approach dice in a really good way, or in some cases, a very unique way as well. So these are ones that have very good mitigation of having bad versus good rolls. They've got um, you know different ways of dealing with with it, cards you can play, whatever it happens to be. And so I'm really excited. We're just going to jump right in with my number 10. At number 10, I've got Tiny Epic Galaxies. Realistically though, any of the Tiny Epic series would fit where you're essentially rolling dice to determine what um, resources you're gonna be getting and how you can, in this case, land on certain planets. So the idea is that you've got resource faces that represent specific aspects, and you're trying to collect enough of those so that you can colonize and control planets. I really like the idea of how um, you can spread them out, essentially. That's really the mitigating factor on this. But that said, it is still really random, and there's not a whole lot that you can do to change things once it's really happened, although there are a few mechanics for that as well, which I really appreciate. But overall, that's why it's so low on the list, but still, Tiny Epic Galaxy is my number 10. At number nine, I've got Tumbling Dice. This is a combination dexterity game slash a little bit of luck like Yahtzee style, where the idea is you're pushing dice down uh, like stair steps and you're trying to get them land as close to the edge as possible so you get the most points, depending on what face is pointed up. So of course in this game, you have very much the randomness of the dice. You really can't control where they go up, but in the end, it's mostly like shuffleboard where you're just trying to get them just right. And I love that idea of the dexterity aspect of this game. And that's why it's on the list, but it's so low because there's really not a mitigating thing for like, I rolled a one versus a six and getting four points versus 24 points. But it's still a wonderful little game. Tumbling Dice, my number nine. At number eight, I've got Stuffed Fables. This is an adventure game akin to something like Mice and Mystics or the D&D adventure games where you're moving around a grid and mechanically the dice come into play where you're drawing them out of a bag and specific colors enable you to do particular actions or you can do universal actions with any color. And so that's like moving and stuff like that. But the idea is that you roll the dice, see how much you can do, whether it's damage or whatever. And the reason it's so low on the list though is because first off, the dice are a relatively small small piece of it in terms of what you're actually doing on your turn. But the other aspect is there's not as much in terms of mitigating factors that are really, really good. So you do have mitigating in, in terms of you can roll multiple dice to really try to get a um, get something accomplished. You um, have capabilities of your characters that allow you to re-roll dice or add more dice and stuff along those lines. But in the end, it's an adventure game and whether or not guys are going to attack you is based based entirely on how many black dice you draw and how quickly you draw them and some other things like that. So it can be a little bit annoying, but it is still well implemented and there are a lot of things that you can do to avoid pain and heartache from it. So Stuff Fables, my number eight. At number seven, I've got Las Vegas. Of course, we have to have a game that's about gambling-ish, sort of. The idea of this game is that you roll dice and then you see what you rolled, and the idea is that you're going to put those onto individual sections to try to get as much money as possible, with the idea being you've got some press your luck where you can re-roll your dice a few times to really try to get some specific thing that has more cash associated with it and all that kind of thing. So again, I mean, it's low on the list because it's Las Vegas. You are are really trying, you're really trying to beat that randomness, but I love the fact that they allow you to re-roll a couple of times. You'll always have an option of the one through six pips to place certain things down. And so it does it in a really good way. And thematically it really fits because again, it's Vegas, baby. You never know what's gonna happen. So with that, Las Vegas is my number seven. 
And number six, I've got Formula D. Essentially, the reason that this game is on the list is because you have some very unique dice that you really don't see anywhere else. The way that it works for this particular one is that each individual die will represent a gear that your car is in. So as you go up in gears, the dice get bigger that allow you to go farther and faster. But the whole thing is that if you overshoot a particular corner, then And number two, I've got Kingsburg, the dice-based worker placement game. So the idea of this is during your production seasons, you roll three dice and those act as your workers. The actual, you've got numbered members of the king's court. And so of course, the higher level numbers you'll be able to use once, whereas you could also choose to maybe use two or even three of the lower level numbers instead. With the idea being that it sort of balances out in terms of what you're able to get. In addition, a lot of the buildings that you're building out throughout this will give you special items that allow you to go up or down. You can also get just the capability of going up or down by one or two as the game progresses. And so it does a wonderful job of mitigating some of the inherent issues of dice rolling. In addition, you also have sort of that standardized um, catch up, not really catch up mechanic, but the idea that somebody gets an extra die if they need it and all sorts of other different stuff like that. It works wonderfully and I absolutely love how this handles the randomness. King Kingsburg, my number two. And number one, I've got Too Many Bones, also known as too many dice, because that's essentially what it is. In this game, you are playing as a particular character in an RPG setting where the idea is that everything your character is and does is represented by dice. You've got your different character stats, you've got your attacks, you've got all sorts of different stuff. And just like a lot of the other games I've mentioned so far, you have things like cards that you're able to play to re-roll dice, add particular numbers, remove particular numbers, whatever it happens to be that you need at the time. And so it does a wonderful job of not only integrating dice rolling into the whole thing, but essentially making the whole game about dice and everything involved with the game dice-based. So it's really cool. It's something that I had never seen before and I really enjoyed the first time I played it. And so with all of that, too Many Bones is my number one. Well, folks, that's going to be it for me. I hope that you enjoyed this video on my top 10 favorite dice-based games. Like I mentioned before, it's not something that I dislike particularly, but it is something that I can be kind of picky about in terms of how the dice or cards or whatever are handled in a game. And so with that, I would love to hear what you guys have to say about this. What are your thoughts on dice in general? What are your thoughts on the games that I picked? And what are your favorite games that utilize dice? Is it a way that they utilize dice, a new way, an old way, some mitigating factor that allows you to control them better. Let me know anything and everything in the comments below. You guys know I love to hear from you. But with that, if you guys haven't done so already, please take a look at all my various social media pages as well as my Patreon page. On all those, you'll be able to interact with myself and my channel in a whole bunch of really cool ways. But regardless, thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you next time.